And welcome back to the Factor on Censored. The teacher shortage is more apparent than ever. HISD students will be returning to school very soon and other campuses around the country. School and kids are returning, but a lot of those classrooms are empty and in need of an educator. My guests tell me a lack of money and respect are the main problems. Well, what we've seen so far, we have at least 10,000 more teachers that are have left the classroom over what we normally see year over year. So we definitely know that there's a huge issue. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, this, this wasn't something that just started with COVID, though. This has been building for a long time. It, it, it's been building on the lack of respect to that many of our teachers and school employees feel, uh, not only from the uh, administration, but from frankly, the public in general these days, uh, politicians who are using them as scapegoats for their elections, the lack of funding, the under-resourcing, uh, and the overburden of additional duties are taking their toll. And Arnetta, what are you hearing from your coworkers who have not returned to the classroom, and why do you stay? Well, of course, I stay because I, I got to get paid. I'm a divorced mother, and uh, and I'm an unpaid elected official, so um, that's why I'm staying. But um, I, a lot of teachers, it's about, you know, the culture, the climate is on the campus. That I keep saying this over and over again. They're not paying us enough. They think 60000 66000 is enough. It's not. Many are still, you know, working second jobs and just – some of the behaviors with the students, and then sometimes you don't have parental support. There, you know, and, and it's it's overwhelming. And then the the workload, you know, they keep adding duties on top of duties. And so you you do better at Walmart, standing at the door smiling. <laughs> so that's what, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, Annetta, do you think if if you weren't if you didn't have all the financial burden on you, would you mm -hmm. walk away from teaching? You know. The only reason why I wouldn't, to be honest with you, Isaiah, because I'm a special ed teacher. So my heart, you know, you don't find a lot of passion. In it. Well, you do, but a lot of us are there because of the passion. We love the kids. We don't want the kids to suffer. And I think that's what I am about. Because guess what, uh, Isaiah, and you know this as well, if, if, we, if we lose the kids, our future is lost. Somebody has to make the ultimate sacrifice, unfortunately, in education. And so I think that's, you know, I think that's what the issue is. You got to find some somebody that's passionate, but then unfortunately, don't take the passion for granted and not pay us. Right. So. You're exactly right. And, and, Zeph, what, and, and, what, and, and go ahead, Zeph. The passion, and don't knock the passion out of them year after year, week after week, without recognizing it doesn't cost you one cent to be nice to somebody. It doesn't Absolutely. cost you a thing to say you appreciate what they're doing despite the conditions that we have to do it under. Now, Absolutely. Ziff, what can you do at the administrative level, at the state level, to get some of these teachers back? What can administrators do? What can lawmakers do to get some of these teachers back into the classroom? Well, we just finished a, a study of, uh, uh, we just finished having deep conversations with teachers all across the state of Texas. And what they told us, even more so than money, was uh, them actually having a voice about what happens. Actually getting rid of the duties that don't directly relate to the teaching of their children. Uh, getting rid of the uh, burdensome paperwork and the redundant paper, uh, uh, reports that they have to file. They feel like they're having to script out reports so that people, other people can justify their jobs. Get rid of the things that keep them away from teaching kids because that, as you heard from Arnetta, is where they get their passion. As long as it is working with the children, I think we can keep them and, and, and have them stay. But when you start pulling them for all these other things, when you add these additional duties without compensation, when you look at the fact that in Texas, the ninth largest economy in the world, we are $7,500 below the national average in the United States. People start saying, you know what? I, I love the kids, but I can't do this anymore because my own children are suffering. You're exactly right. Arnetta, from your perspective, what do you want more of when it comes to state lawmakers and administrators? I think um, I want more. I need them to really allow teachers to be at the table. Enough, it's not enough teachers. 
you have all the top heavy people who haven't taught in 30 years making decisions. You have to go into the trenches of these classrooms and talk to those who are really being impacted, those that are in the trenches, those that, those that are at the table. And so I think that's the problem. You're not listening to teachers directly. What will the classroom look like with more than 10,000 teachers gone here in Texas? What will, will we have overcrowded classrooms? What? Well, that's part of the problem that's making this worse is when uh, there's a vacancy, they're splitting up kids, adding additional duties and additional students to the roster, students that teachers don't necessarily know, don't know where their grade levels are, don't know where their main focuses are for education, and it just makes that issue worse. Uh, we should not be focused on trying to get any warm body into the room. We should be focused on trying to retain the qualified and certified teachers that we have because, frankly, we have more people with a certification in the state not willing to enter a classroom than we do uh, actually coming back here in August. We got a lot of work to do.